this morning. Um, as we begin our time together, in each one of our pews, we have our pew pad. So if you would take that, place your name in that, pass that down to anybody who may be next to you, and be sure to greet everybody as we get into our worship this morning. Also, if there is a prayer that you'd like to share with our church community, we have prayer cards in each one of the pews too. Fill one of those out and then place that in the offering plate later in the service. A few announcements to draw your attention to. Our Sunday crier in the bulletin is full of information about the happenings in the life of the church. We have a guest with us this morning, Ms. Lucy Bloom, who will be speaking on behalf of Veronica's Voice. Their organization has a few products that are available for purchase. They will be found in the Heritage Room after the service, so we hope you will check those out. And our Summer Vacation Bible School program is well underway in terms of planning. It will be held in July on the 10th and 13th, and our registration process is already open. So for all the children, the grandchildren, the nieces, the nephews, the friends, the neighbors, please spread the word. We want to share the love of God with all of our children this summer. Yesterday, in partnership with Eden Theological Seminary, which um, this is, if you do not know him, this is uh, the president of Eden Seminary and my professor and friend, Dr. David Greenhoff. He's going to be preaching today. Uh, he came out as, he, as we were hosting what we're calling tearing down walls. And that's a conversation about how the religions of this world cannot just work on paths of peace, but can enrich each other in the experiences of all. And I want to thank all the people in our church community who helped out with this event. Um, I think we did a really good job. I'm a little biased, perhaps, but I think we did a great job of showing hospitality. And for all people um, who attended or took part in any way, Thank you for all the work that she did. And I really come away with this with encourage because one of the things David said yesterday was, when you come to a point where the interreligious conflict has gotten to the point of something after 9-11, it's too late to lay the groundwork work to peace. We do that every week around this congregation. And it really encouraged me to say we need to continue doing be persistent with the work that we do because it matters. And then after that important and serious conversation yesterday, we had a wedding. So today we have guest organist because Joseph for some reason did not want to play the organ the day after he got married. <laughs> he and Stacey Hopkins were married here yesterday and then we went out, Lisa Donnelly, you don't know if you know, don't know about Lisa. Lisa makes cakes, and not just any cake. She makes cakes for the Queen of England. These are high quality cakes. So we had cake and we danced. It was glorious. And so today, we come in with all of that to worship the God who brings us together. So this morning, let's worship. We have two themes that come together in our worship this morning. Today is International Earth Day, and so along with people in our community, across our nation, and around the globe, we set time and energy aside to care for God's creation. So I invite you to join me in our call to worship in the spirit of Earth Day. We have come here seeking to worship the God of all creation. We have come to stand on holy ground. We have come to sing God's praises as the red buds and crab apples, the tulips and daffodils, sing God's praises with their blooming. We have come to sing praises to our Creator. We have come to experience the mighty rush of the Spirit, like our surrounding flowing waters in Indian and Tomahawk Creeks, in the Kansas and Missouri rivers. We have come to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We have come to experience the God of creation in this sacred space. Will you join me in our opening hymn, number 28 in our hymnal, For the Beauty of the Earth? The words will also be on our screens. Please rise as you are able.
Please be seated. The one who calls the earth into being also calls us to acts of repentance and trust that our Creator knows us through and through. Let us open our hearts to the healing of God's grace. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, you place in your creation and you command us to care for it. Your works declare glory and splendor, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded or destroyed earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy on us. Where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share the planet, grant us your peace. Renew us in the waters of baptism, refresh us with the winds of your spirit, and sustain us with the bread of life. Our prayers continue with a moment of silent reflection. The God of creation is also the God of recreation. In Christ, we have new life. We have the opportunity now to change our ways and help heal and restore creation. You are forgiven by God. Go and do the right thing and live into God's way of love, restoration, and peace. Amen. We are part of the joy that is God's creation, and you are part of the joy that makes this a community of faith. Would you please take a moment now and greet all those who are gathered here? Hi guys, come on up. All right, now. Hey there, how are you? How many of you have a little, a younger brother or sister? All right. How many times do they, they change things that you think you're going to do? 
all the time. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce all of you to my baby brother. Now, he might not look like my baby brother, but he's always going to be my baby brother, whether he looks like it or not. And his name is David, and he lives in St. Louis. So we're real excited that he's here today. But um, I had all these plans, and he changed them. And I said, okay, we'll do it your way. And I just said, I said to her, well, she says, well, what are we going to do? I said, follow my lead. So here we go. And I said, always we do it your way. There we go. <laughs> what are baby brothers for? So in the Bible reading for today, there's a great section, and it talks about the mountains and the hills sing. There's so much excitement that they sing, and the trees clap their hands. So this last week, I had a visitor at my house. It was my grandbaby, and she's one year and a half. And when she gets excited, she wiggles like crazy. She just gets all wiggly. Do you ever do that? Oh, Martha? Uh, I do. I wiggle. Martha, my mom used to like to watch basketball. Oh, my gosh, it was horrible. And when, they, when they, she watched KU basketball, and when they would do well, she would just jump up and down so excited. And she beat the floor. She pounded on the floor. Yeah. So when you get excited, when you're really happy, you move, right? Mm -hmm. So in the Bible, it says this. It says, do you know what? It says the trees clapped their hands. But, but wait, I, wait, I want to show you some trees yet. Not yet. You're going to help with that in a minute. I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite trees. Do you know what a weeping willow is? No. What, what is it? My aunt's favorite tree. It's your, well, your aunt and I have this in common. I love weeping willows, too. But I never thought of them as weeping. Why do they call them? Did they cry? Why? Well, they do. They kind of hang down, don't they? But when the wind blows, they go, ooh, ooh. They're so good. I think they're happy willows. So I need three of you who want to be a willow tree. All right, I've got one, two, three. You come be willow trees. You come right here. And now there are other trees that get excited, though, so I need some more trees. Does anyone know what a Christmas tree looks like? Martha, will you come over here? And, and uh, Emmett, you come. And why don't you go with Martha, and you guys will be Christmas trees. You want to be a Christmas tree, too? You go be a Christmas tree. How many of you know what a mighty oak is? I know. Pastor Robert says, good. So would you take everybody who wants to be a mighty, can you be a mighty oak? I think you can. You come help over here. So we have mighty oaks. We have mighty oaks. And we have happy willows. And we have Christmas trees. How does a Christmas tree clap its hands? It does it like that. And it waves. That's good. All right. So here's the thing. God said there's going to be a great day. And in that great day, everybody's going to go out with joy and be filled with peace and the mountains and the hills are going to sing, and the trees, ready? Ready, trees? Are going to clap their hands with joy. Woo! Like this, willows. Yes, that's what we do. Isn't it amazing? The whole creation joins in celebration. Thank you. Today is Earth Day. Come on back. Today is Earth Day, and we are so glad on this day that we're a part of an earth that has... Happy trees. And do you know when Earth Day started? When? 1970. Oh, my God. So Earth Day is 48 years old. Oh, it's old. Well, who? And it's 48 years old, and we still have things that we need to fix. Mm. In 48 years, you would think we fixed it all, but we haven't. I heard today that plastic is what they're going to be working on this year. So when the plastic gets cleaned up, the trees clap. I know. The trees will clap. Hey, you guys were great, and I don't know if you do this, but often in my church, when we finish talking like this, we take a minute and pray. Would you, do you do that? Yes, we do. Could we do it together? Sure. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks for the clapping of trees and the joys and the pieces that we encounter. 
Thank you for all your good things in this wonderful creation. And thank you for these, our younger brothers and sister, and our life together with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. What, is, what happens next, Martha? Uh, we go down to Sunday school and cool. see these people back here. I want to share Sean had a picture. He said, the mountains clap their hands, or the mountains sing, the trees clap their hands, and the earth dances. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say the earth dances. Oh, the earth dances. Whoa, so we can dab out of here. Go to school and dab, huh? Okay, let's go. That's cool. Oh, Oh, it's like, like how to show me. Oh, all right. I got it. Thanks for the help.
Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. Well, I am just so delighted to be here, you can hardly believe it. I just love to come back to this church because this church has been with me forever. I mean, really forever. My mother and father joined the church one year after the charter closed, and they became uh, members, and uh, I was baptized here just very shortly after the congregation was formed in the room where there's now a Jewish community that gathers. That was a sanctuary where I was baptized. I don't think it was this font. I think it was another one. There is a, there is a line you're supposed to use. It's a liturgical line. Uh, something said in worship services from time to time. It says, remember your baptism. I've always found that a bit of a challenge because I was an infant and I don't remember a thing about my baptism. And I used to ask my uh, family about it, and uh, my dad was an usher, my mother was in the choir, and they think it was an important day, but they don't remember much about it either. So I've been stumped with this remember my baptism line until a few years ago when I saw someone baptize an infant, and they said, now they're a member of this congregation. And I thought, you know, that's not right. It's not really what it is. Now they're a member of the church universal. And so I want to start today by 
bringing you a few greetings from churches that I've been fortunate to be in their pulpit of or worship with and bring greetings to you from them to give you a sense of the flavor of what it means to be a part of the church that's more than the congregation gathered. I want to start with a congregation that gathers in Pandu in Ghana, in the region of Ghana in West Africa called the Volta region. And when they gather for worship there, they start early in the morning and they go most of the day. Well, maybe we'll try that. <laughs> uh, uh, but there aren't any windows in the church in Pandu because it's never cold enough to need to have a window and never rich enough to have air conditioning. The people in Pandu worship with such incredible enthusiasm unbelievable they take an offering three times and when the offering starts somebody starts to gets up with a trumpet and plays a sound and someone else beats a drum and they dance their money forward now these are people who live on less than two dollars a day but such joy they have in worship part of the evangelical presbyterian church in ghana our partner church in West Africa. And then I want to bring you greetings from Owa Christian Church in the island of Pompe. I was very fortunate to preach there. In Pompe, uh, it's an island in the S South Pacific, uh, Micronesia, and it is so hot you cannot believe it. You know, they say it's humid in Kansas City and in St. Louis, and we talk about relative humidity, you know, 80, 90%. In Pompeii, the humidity is 99% all the time. And one minute it rains, and the next minute it doesn't, and you didn't notice the difference. <laughs> I, I, I got up fresh every morning that we were there and put on dry clothes, and by 8.30 I was soaked all the way through. It's a wonderful place, and they worship with joy and love, and they teach their children, and they laugh, and they have a wonderful time. And they sit on an island that is getting covered up with water each year. The water rises more and more. And by 2030, they're going to have to move further up the mountain because all of the current homes will be gone because of the rising of the oceans. These are part of our church sisters and brothers. Uh, let me bring you another one from the city of Ramallah in the Palestinian territories in the area of Israel-Palestine. There we worshiped in a Lutheran church and it was so remarkable. They, they sang the hymns and I recognized the tunes but the language was Arabic. They they gathered together and the children were just loose. I mean, everywhere. The children were back in the narthex playing like crazy. And it was a little rowdy. And I thought, oh my, this is not very proper. But it was lovely. And then when it came time for communion on Worldwide Communion Sunday, all the children rushed up to the rail and were welcomed and shared in the table. I could go on, but I don't want to do Africa to you and make it go all day. I just want you to have a sense and a flavor as I've been so blessed that when I was baptized here, I was baptized not just in this congregation, but I was baptized to the whole church, the remarkable church around God's world. And it is an incredible thing. You know, there are billions of people in the world that you're connected to, that you have a relationship with you may not even know it's an extraordinary thing. It's really a remarkable thing. We are bound together. Now, we don't always agree what family does. We don't always get along. We wish we did. But we are bound 
connected of a peace. So it turns out that the people of Israel that were being addressed at the time of the prophet Isaiah were sure that they were bound together too, but they were bound together as a single community. They were God's chosen people. You know how it started with them. They were nobody, really nobodies. They were slaves and taken into slavery in Egypt, and things were horrible. They had neither the fruits of their labor or the freedom to enjoy their family and children. Their wives were taken from them and by the Pharaoh and slavery. And then they got free. And when they got free, they just became ecstatic with joy. And they became a people and they got to a promised land and they established a nation and they, they became a real people an identity. They were somebody now. And they were somebody for generations and generations and generations. And then corruption slipped in. And then things started to fall apart. And one leader after another disappointed them. And the nations around them came and conquered them. And it was all lost. Imagine everything lost. And so they say, the Lord has forsaken me. My God has forgotten me. They, they were terrified they were abandoned. They were refugees in exile and had no hope. And then this silly little prophet known as Isaiah starts to do these wild and crazy things the first thing he does is he says, fear not. Fear not. Why not fear? Things are scary. The world is a frightening place. Fear not. And then he says, I love you, is what God says, because you are precious and honored in my eyes. And then he does this remarkable thing at the end of this section of Isaiah in case you had fallen asleep, he, he uses an, an, an expletive, a, 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 an exor exhortation, a, a word that's translated here in English as, Ho! Oh, you were asleep. Wake up. Ho! Oh, don't, don't miss this. Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh, wake up! Listen, this is important. Pay attention here. And what he says next is, Ho! Oh, everyone who thirsts. Oh, every one, everyone, 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 oh, everyone, 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 who? Everyone who thirsts, come and have drink without price and eat, eat good things. Come, oh, everyone. The people of Israel, like so many people do, were persuaded over the generations that God was on their side and not the others. They were persuaded that God was for them and against those people. They were persuaded that they were chosen and the others were not. And it became a tradition and a practice, a lot like how we have those big rubber foam hands that say, we're number one. 
and everybody else is two, three, four, somewhere down the line. They, they were persuaded that they were the ones. And then everything fell apart. And the prophet brings this crazy word from God. And it's a word that says, oh, everyone, not just you, everyone. Not, not just those who are like you, everyone. Not, not just those who are from here, everyone. Not just those that I agree with, everyone. Not just those that I like, everyone. Not just everyone. Who? Everyone. 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 Think again. You have been thinking one way, and as you've thought this way, you have decided that you're in, they're out. But no, the prophet says, your thoughts are not God's thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's thoughts higher than yours. As God's ways are higher than our ways. For us, it's too easy to think it's about us, but it is not. It is about everyone who is welcomed by God. Every one. Everyone. So this weekend we've been talking about the relationship between religions. And like the people of Israel, the Christian church has for a very long time wanted to have an exclusive claim on God. It's about us, not them. We're the insiders, they're the outsiders. But I believe this text... <laughs> from this crazy little prophet speaking to these people who were frightened and alone and overwhelmed is screaming to us over the ages. It is screaming to us over the ages and says, quit. Quit thinking that you have it all. You do have it all, but it is not just for you. It is for everyone. And you know what creation says when it's for everyone? When everyone has a place, when the table is set for all, when, when sisters and brothers of every kind, black and white and tan and speaking Arabic or English or German or every language on the earth, do you know what? When everybody has a place, when everyone is together, when that day starts to really happen, do you know what happens? The tr mountains can't help themselves. They start to sing. And the trees can't hold themselves still. They start to clap. The, the whole creation celebrates the whole world celebrates because it is no longer the case that we're following our thoughts and our ways. Because as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than our ways. And God's thoughts higher than our thoughts. And what God says through this remarkable prophet, this foolish little man named Isaiah, who by the way Jesus quotes more than any other book of the Bible... has the audacity to say, everyone, everyone, even me, even you, everyone. Oh, for a world where everyone respects each other's ways, where love is lived when all is done with justice and with praise. Friends, I invite you to stand and join me in song as we continue our prayer and worship. Our hymn is number 575, Oh, for a World.
In our time of gifts and offerings, we often pause to consider how our giving impacts the world around us. Not only do we enable the mission and ministry of Colonial Church, but our gifts also provide for many agencies of mercy and justice in our local community and around the world. This morning, we welcome Lucy Bloom, who will speak to us in a brief mission moment about the work of the local agency, Veronica's Voice. Thank you all for having me here today and for supporting our work for so many years. I come with exciting news this morning. Um, those of you who are familiar with Veronica's voice are aware that our dream was to have a residential program for women who were exiting a life of prostitution and sex trafficking. And our home opened December of 2016. Um, and of the women that we have served out of that home, two of them have reunited with their children. Um, Two of them have gotten their relationship back with their family and continue to receive supports now from their family. All of the women, while they were in our program, they maintained their sobriety as well as their mental health recovery, their addiction recovery, and um, pursuing their medical care and all, all of those needs. Um, once the women have been in our program for several months, they have um, a pursuit of career and their education. Um, four of the women are still gainfully employed. Um, one of them is a full-time student at a college, and she received a scholarship to pursue her education. Um, there have been two of the women who have relapsed, and we light the candle for them every day to, uh, in hopes that they will find their way home once again. But this is a great joy that I share with you, because as I reflect on the Word of God, when it speaks about the woman caught in adultery and how she was brought in front of the church leaders, and they all had their stones of judgment that they could not help but drop from their hands. And I've often wondered what happened to that woman. Jesus looks at her and says, go and don't return to that life anymore. But I thought, so where did she go? Well, a couple of years ago, I ran across some words from theologians that believe that she very well may have been Mary Magdalene. And if that was the case, he invited her to join his community. He discipled her. He welcomed her as family. And that's what you all are, are talking of here today. And it just means so much to me as a person who... When I was rescued from the life, the church is who drove me to my appointments. They are the ones who helped to mentor me. They were the ones who taught me what healthy relationship looks like. They were honestly the ones who taught me what dangerous relationships look like. I didn't know any better. I didn't know I was worth any more until the church showed me how. And so I come to you with a grateful heart for my own life and for the lives of the women that you all have joined arms in serving. Um, so thank you from Veronica's voice. Our home is called Magdalene KC. In our job training program, the women um, make body care products, and we've brought some of those here today, as was already mentioned. I would just love the opportunity to get to meet more of you. You all have been so hospitable to me today. I even love seeing that long line of ministries that you all serve. It just shows the depth of your compassion and the, the breadth of your faith. So thank you for all that you are doing.
you join me in our prayer of blessing? God of all creation, all that we have is from your creative hand. All that we give is through Jesus' love. Bless these gifts so that others may have joy. Amen. Please be seated. You know, I love the fact that she brought up the idea that of the woman who was caught and was they were about to stone her, and Jesus says, you know, whoever's without sin should cast the first stone. And I've always wondered, what happened to her after that story? And here's what I believe. I believe that in that moment, Jesus did something that Jesus did throughout all of it. He sent a church, that church that was out there to be there for everyone absolutely everyone. And we, as the church in our time and place, we have to continue that mission, continue to be that church for everyone. And that's why I love our community here, because we continue to persist with that work. We do it in a lot of different ways, but we continue to be that church that Jesus sends. Each week we come together with the prayers of the people in this community And after each prayer, we say, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and can you pray it with me, saying, hear our prayer. Yesterday was the day I got to see two people I love get married here. Their first date was asked for on the stairs out there. I got front row tickets to uh, to their romance, and yesterday I had the honor of marrying them. And so today we ask for God's blessing to be with Joseph and Stacy Kern as they begin their life together. And the choir, we were talking about you last night at the dance. You have been the Greek chorus that has been behind. We have been trying to get these two together for what, two, going on two years now. We did it. <laughs> so Lord, in your mercy. And as I came up this morning, Sean Liu, um, wonderful little boy, Sean has a prayer that he handed me when he came up for the children's conversation this morning. And his grandmother, Maggie Carter, is in the hospital and her lungs are filling with fluid right now. And he's concerned. He said he wanted to be sure that as he went down to Sunday school that his church prayed for her. And so we do. Lord, in your mercy. And last evening, Damianti Niles, who was one of our presenters here this weekend, a friend of, a friend of our, our family, Um, She got the news last evening that her nephew, Andres Michael, was in a car accident in Portland, Oregon last evening, and he had surgery, and he is now stable in ICU. She doesn't have a lot of details, but she asked if our congregation could pray for him today, and so we do. Lord, in your mercy. And Mary Lee Battaglia, actually, I I was thinking about Mary Lee when David was up and he had the kids pray, and how many of those kids all went immediately into pretzel prayer, because that's a Mary Lee thing. Mary Lee's friend, Mary Hernandez, died this past Wednesday. She was only 56. And she was a recently retired educator. And as soon as I got the email, I remember Mary. She was here for the rummage sale. She's taken part in some of our colonial women's activities. And as a friend of colonial and as a child of God, we ask for God's comforter to be with her and her family as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy. We are in the presence of God. Let's take a moment now to let that presence penetrate our being as we pray together silently. In our community's continuing prayers, we continue to keep all people who are living and serving in the middle of war in prayer. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to keep people safe and to work with us to find that path to peace. For caregivers and for those living with dementia, may they receive the respect and the love that they deserve. And we pray for God's guidance for this nation's ideals of freedom and justice for all people, for everyone in these turbulent times. And we pray for anyone who is living in the shadow of depression or mental illness 
And we ask for God's light of hope to shine. For those immigrants and refugees who are far from the land they knew, we ask for safety and compassion to come from Christ Church. And for those loved ones in our lives who are with cancer and other ongoing life-threatening conditions, we pray. For Evelyn Johnson, Heather Rubesh, Sean Bolter, Caleb Ball, Andrew Wood, Kelly Hokinson, Nathan Green, Elena Thorne, Mark Tavault, Timothy McDonald, and Lee Frommelt. And we ask for God's strength to flow from our prayers to them. God is with us. Not just Christians, not just anyone of any particular religion. God is with us, everyone. And so let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Within the music traditions of the Christian church, we often find that a hymn or a song is written for an occasion, for a new beginning, for an anniversary, for an impending death. And so it is with our closing hymn this morning. In 1876, a small town in Vermont, the township of Brandon, decided that they wanted to hold a centennial celebration to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence. The local Episcopal priest named Daniel Roberts said he would write a hymn for the day. He was a Civil War soldier, and so he brought his life's experience into conversation with the life of faith of that community. And those words that he penned so long ago still speak to us, still call to us and our mission as we work for faith and justice in our time. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in song. Our hymn is number 592, God of the Ages, Who With Sure Command.
go out to be there for everyone. We all have ministries that we are going to go do this week. We all have people that need our love and our support. And that's what we go from here to do. And we do that because we covenant to do that every week. And so I invite you to turn toward the center aisle as we make the covenant that binds us as the people of uh, Colonial Church. And as always, if you're not at a point in your life where you feel like you can make this covenant, that is perfectly as a blessing and a prayer that someday you will. We covenant with the Lord and the man who is the Lord and the man who is the Lord and the man who is the Lord. Worship is now over, but our time of service to everyone begins now. So go in peace and live passionately and love faithfully and celebrate, Lord, celebrate every moment of your life from now until it's been all, because our God of resurrecting grace goes with you always. Amen. <laughs>